Well, we've decided to um, go ahead and terminate you. This couldn't possibly be happening to me. I'm a great worker. Granted, I was very incompetent at the beginning of my tenure with Walmart. His thoughts raced through my head for the preceding 24 hours of my termination from Walmart. I was absolutely devastated. I didn't realize how important my job was until it was too late. <laughs> Goodbye, money. Au revoir, love interest, who was two hours away. I'm going to love texting you with the phone bill I can't maintain. <laughs> can't forget about you, gas money. I may miss you most of all. I darted past my mom and I headed straight upstairs as soon as I got home. I didn't sleep a wink that night, along with, with ignoring every text and phone call, much to my sister's chagrin. All I did was hold my dog and think about what I was going to do. That's right, folks. Yours truly was almost terminated. Now, ain't he supposed to be a pastor? Oh, he's a pastor. I, I heard him preach. Well, he must not be a very good one if he's out there getting fired from his job. Yeah, how about that? People seem to forget I was 18 when I surrendered to the ministry. Not that I'm defending it by any means, because I'm supposed to be an adult. All my childish ways should be done with, right? Well, life being the learning process it is, this was just one, a very crucial one, that I had to deal with. It's much more than, oh well, you lost your job, now you gotta look for a new one. Oh, and good luck with that, you know, because you were terminated, that's going to show up. Well, for me, I was at a very hard spot. You see, it, I was supposed to be saving, still am to this day, for college. And, and it's very different. I... I it's not simple for me because I can't just go to UT Martin just up the road from me. I have to go to a special school. <laughs> not a special school, but I have to go to a college slash seminary, private school to be exact, like Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. Preach the world, reach the world. Cheap plug. Maybe I don't have to, but I definitely feel like it's my calling. So, there's no simple, there's no simple way to just go about that. I have to set out a plan and then go. I wish it was as simple as just going. And sometimes I, I think that's how it is. You know, as a Christian... I feel like I, I read all these stories about people who just go out and do something without, you know, any hesitation or thought out process. And I'm just like, well, maybe I should go. But then, you know, reality hits in. And not that I'm separating reality from spirituality. I, I never want to do that because they're not different. Now, I'm a firm believer that you can live two separate lives one being showing up on church on Sundays and you know just oh well the pastor did a good job you know I'm I'm sure someone got something out of it and then going out and living a kind of life separately such as Monday through Saturday or Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And be a perfect person on Wednesday and Sunday. Because <laughs> that's the church people do, right? But. 
I do believe the correct way to do it is act as you would on Sunday and act the same way on Monday and Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and possibly Saturday. Well, I guess some of you Catholics do that on Saturday anyway. But besides the point. So I'm supposed to be this preacher, as many old people have referred to me as. I'm, I've preached before, and I'll preach again, but I would never label myself a preacher until that was my full-time job. I'm a missionary, above all. But here I am about to get booted out the door. I laid in my bed and just thought. But I'm an optimist. I, I'm surprised I made it this far in life with the relationship, with a relationship of Christ of any capacity. For me, it's it's just who I am. I, I can't imagine, you know, being anything less than an optimist and still having something to do with Jesus. Not that it's any, uh, not that it's any credit to my own, because it's all it, it all goes to Jesus. I, I was made, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I, I'd see that more and more every day. But it's a matter of, I just think if I was one of those people who complained about everything, saying, yeah, I had a hard life. My my parents got divorced, so I don't have to go to church, a bunch of hypocrites. If, I'm glad I'm not one of those people I did have a hard life and those of you who've watched my other testimony videos will know that my parents got a divorce <laughs> my parents got divorced they did and my mom had to raise three kids by herself practically not practically she did so we had it tough so 8 o'clock rolls around that next morning and I told them I'd be there. So I got there around 9 o'clock in the morning. And I talked to my boss. And he said, hey, how you doing? My boss is one of the happiest guys in the world. And I do not complain. I'm, I would love to be that happy all the time. So we go in there and we talk. And I said, they're trying to give me the boot for poor performance. And there's no way. You can go back and watch that and see how well I did. And so I said, well, all right. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll look at the videos and we'll, uh, we'll tell you how it is. So I go home and I, I crash. I probably slept for a good three or four hours. And I wake up and I have a voicemail. And it's from, you know who. So... I get a voicemail asking me to come to, back to work, and what do I do? I go to work for the second time that day, and hey, go meet with the managers in the office, all right? He doesn't actually do, but I thought it'd be a good extra add-on. So I go in there with the mindset of shut your mouth, don't say anything. And if I say anything, let it be a yes, ma'am, or a thank you, or both. So, this is what I get. After evaluating the tapes from yesterday, we have decided to reinstate you. <sighs> it felt so good. Although I was a bit taken back by the reinstatement, I never actually left, or was fired per se I couldn't have been more relieved but that was only 20% of the 80% butt chewing I was bound to receive and honestly I needed it we're reinstating you on a technicality buddy 
You barely, and I mean barely, got your job back. From here on out, you're on thin ice, and you better keep your nose clean. You better not be late, run your mouth like you've been known to do, or anything else. Am I understood? Now, these are some false accusations coming out. Well, not all of them, but I, I'm still late to this day, practically. But I remembered, yes, ma'am, or thank you. And so I just said, yes, ma'am, and bit my tongue. They asked me, well, do you want to come in and finish your shift, or do you want to hold it off till tomorrow? So I decided to hold it off till tomorrow. But I couldn't have been happier, you know. Even though I'd been there twice. So I go home and I'm going to enjoy my night. I texted my love interest and let her know what was going on and why I didn't get back to her from the previous night. And about 45 minutes later, I get a phone call. From you know who. <laughs> and uh, they say, hey, uh, you think you could come in? Possibly. We got nobody here. And I said, why not? I'm not doing anything. So I go in and make what I can. I believe I worked a 5 to 10 shift, but oh, wellsies. So I go there, and they got a cashier out there, who, in particular, I was growing close with. We've talked before, and not someone I just would want to have Christmas dinner with or anything, but someone who was a growing friend. They had him out there until I could handle it on my own, and we got to talking. Somewhere in conversation, he let out a curse word. And he said, oh, I'm so sorry. And I and any time someone curses in front of me, they feel obligated to apologize. And I've never got that. I mean, although I do appreciate the gesture, you know, it's never really bothered me, per se. Not that I condone it, I don't. I don't do it myself. But... It's just, it's weird to me. If you're going to cuss, hey, whatever. However, if it's under the wrong circumstances, watch your mouth. So I asked him, what are you sorry for? Well, I know how you feel about that kind of stuff, so I just want to apologize. Yeah, but what are you sorry for? And he said, well, I shouldn't be talking like that. Why not? And from there, I, I got to tell him about sin and what sin is. And that, that opened the door for something incredible. I asked him, what church do you go to? And he said, Christian? Yeah, but what church do you go to? Methodist, Baptist, Episcopalian? He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. We're Methodists. And I said, Everybody in your family? He said, Well, I think my brother's a Baptist, you know, because he don't drink, whatever. And I said, Well, what are you? And he said, Well, I was taught that, but I don't know. I just, it's something there. I, I, like, I, I like I believe in a God, but I just kind of do my own thing. And I said, is that what makes you happy? And he said, well, I don't know, I guess. I said, if you were to die tonight, where do you think you'd go? Heaven or Hades? Although less characterized. He said, I don't know. Which is a very popular answer in that if anyone ever gets asked that question. We talked for a little bit longer. I got to tell him about... I got to tell him about this awesome 
Savior named Jesus. You think you want to accept Jesus into your heart? And so he said, I think I do. Although I, I did sense a little uh, resentment to it. So I, I go to start this prayer and I'm just, I got a bad feeling about it. And I said, are you sure you want to do this? And he said, well, I'll hold off on it. Just right now. So I said, all right, man. If that's what you want, I'm not going to do something that you don't want to do. And so I got to talk to him for the rest of the night just about the Bible and Jesus and all that good stuff. And what an ironic twist. After yours truly, preacher, pastor, missionary, was almost fired for his incompetence. Was now leading souls over to Christ. How about that? So, a week later, I'm leaving the store and I hear, Leva! Leva! And so, I see that it's my buddy cashier. And he says, Guess what? Guess the blank what? And I said, what? He said, I did it. I did it. I accept Jesus. And I was like, all right, man. That's good. Turns out some door-to-door -door missionaries, and not those Jehovah's Witnesses, came to his door and got to talk to him as well. And he said, and he, and he accepted Jesus. I couldn't have been, I was like a proud parent. And so I went and purchased him a Bible and wrote some some of my favorite scripture and I just hope the best for him. Because he got fired a month later too. <laughs> Us Christians are bad, right? So yeah. <laughs>